What's up my fellow fly fishermen? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to tie an awesome nymph pattern that I invented and decided to name the Flash Gordon. Sorry about the uh, corny intro, but I mean, when you name a fly that good, how do you not? As of the song, please don't copyright me. But anyway, this is a really awesome searching pattern that I love to use for winter nymphing. It's an awesome lead fly, and it just catches fish. Uh, it, uh, when it's under the water, the flash and the tinsel really reflects a lot of light, and it draws a lot of attention, and it makes it a very lethal attractor pattern, especially if you're going to put it above a fly that is small, such as a small zebra midge or something. A lot of times, if you put one of these above it, it'll end up catching the attention of the fish, and it might end up eating the fly below it. As of the materials that I'm using, I prefer a size 18 curve shank nymph hook with some gold beads, some brown uh, vivas thread, and some medium pearl tinsel. Uh, uh, you're also going to need some UV resin, and it, I prefer brown saddle hackle for the tail, and of course some dubbing for the thorax. So, the first thing that you're going to want to do is slip your bead head onto your hook, making sure that you do the small, uh, small part first and have that facing towards the front. Then secure your bead and hook in your vise and wrap your thread about three-fourths down the hook shank, uh, past the bend, and just snip or um, rip off your extra. And then take a, uh, a single feather of your brown saddle hackle and make sure that you trim away some of the fuzzy bits that you won't be using because we want the uh, nice fibers up at the top and grab a good clump of them um, probably about nine maybe seven seven to nine I'd say and then position those on your uh, on your hook shank I like to tie it in with one loose wrap and then kind of pull it uh, in and adjust it to the length that I like I like about um, same length as the fly for the tail, maybe a little bit shorter, um, give or take. And then once you are finished, um, securing the tail onto the hook, you can trim off your excess of the hackle. And then I like to sometimes trim up my tail, give it a bit of a more narrow look, and then, um, wrap your thread up near the eye. Then take a three- three and a half inch segment of the medium pearl tinsel um, and snip that off with your scissors and make sure it's uh, long enough that you have a lot of room to work with. Then once you've snipped that off, I suggest securing it towards the um, eye of the hook and then begin wrapping. I like to go up a little bit to just kind of make sure that I'm not missing any anything in it and just wrap down all the way to the tail and make sure that it's really um, noticeable and you, you're you not seeing any of the brown thread underneath it. I like to go down and then work my way back up so I get two good coats on and then once you are finished with that you can secure your um, tinsel and you can snip off the excess and if you have enough you can use that excess for another fly if you wish to um, just make sure that you are securing the tinsel really good before you cut it because it has a tendency to um, come undone and then you have to restart and it's just a mess so then take some uh, thread wraps behind the eye of the hook and I like to add some UV resin um, in a clear finish to the tinsel because if you're ever tying a tinsel fly you always want to make sure that you have some sort of uh, material over top of the uh, tinsel because a lot of times if you don't do that the tinsel breaks incredibly easy and will fall apart for this fly I like to do this before I add the dubbing just because a lot of times it gets into the dubbing and then the dubbing's hard and it just looks really weird so um, yeah I'd say 
two to three coats of UV resin, just making sure that there aren't any seams or anything where the tinsel could potentially break and then come undone. And this will make the fly a lot more durable. So when you are done, take a small pinch of your dubbing, like so, and start dubbing that onto the, uh, th onto the thread, making a smallish dubbing noodle. You want it really thin and tight. Um, remember, it's always easy to add more dubbing, but you can't, uh, it's not as easy to take it away. I like to make sure I, the dubbing is positioned how I like it, kind of fluff it up a little bit. And then I will paint some head cement onto the thread before I whip finish to make sure that this fly is very durable because a lot of times um, using head cement just makes your flies last a whole lot longer. And then once you're done with that, make sure to whip finish, making sure that you get a lot of that head cement into the little seams of your whip finish and then pull it tight. A lot of times the head cement will kind of build up on one side as you pull it tight, but that's okay. You can just kind of wipe that away. And when you're done, you can just trim off the thread and continue to uh, hit it with the UV light. I like to do this a few times just to make sure that the fly is really sealed and the UV resin is completely dry. Um, if you don't have a UV light, another thing that you can do is you can leave it in the sun for a little bit and that should get it to work. Although I much prefer a UV light and it's a lot more effective. So yeah, here's the Flash Gordon fly. I hope you guys really enjoyed learning how to tie it. And yeah, I hope I see you guys in some fly tying videos upcoming this winter very soon.